All right, hello everyone and welcome to another short video with Academic Coaching for World Changers. My name is Sierra, you can call me Coach Sierra. I am the Research and Assessment Specialist here at Academic Coaching for World Changers and I wanna welcome you to another video. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between research and assessment, specifically the terms you need to know, who needs to know them, what you need to know, and why you need to know them. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to our YouTube page and stay tuned for more information. Okay, so first of all, the National Counselor's Exam. Those who are taking this exam do need to know this information. Specifically, you'll need to know research and assessment. This matches the eight KCREP common core areas as well as the six domains. Next, those taking the CPCE, the Counselor Preparation Comprehensive Exam, you will also need to know research and assessment terminology. If you were taking the LMSW, you will need to know specifically assessment terms and a little bit of research terms. This exam is not heavy on research and assessment, but there are terms covered in this video, as well as the research and assessment content area that you can find in Helwig, Rosenthal, other books that you would benefit from knowing. Lastly, the LCSW, you also need to know some research and assessment terms. Again, they're not extremely heavy, but there are terms that you will need to know. Okay, so what's the difference, the big picture? In the field, the goals of research and assessment significantly differ. Research focuses on reviewing previous knowledge through literature reviews and meta-analysis and the creation of new knowledge. Research is conducted by testing a hypothesis. Many of you might be familiar with testing a null hypothesis or documenting newly observed observations, specifically if we were doing an observational or non-experimental research study. Assessment focuses on how we collect data, manage our data, and informs our future decision-making decision -making and evaluation goals. Okay, so here are the assessment terms that you will need to know. Normal distribution, also called the normal bell curve. The 68, 95, 99 rule. Sometimes we see it as a 68%, 95%, 99% rule. This is uh, an alignment or has to do with the normal bell curve or the normal distribution. Standard scores, what are they? Specifically Z-scores versus T-scores versus standard deviations. Standard scores versus raw scores. Range versus inclusive range. The measures of central tendency, which include the mean, median, and mode, but it's important to know what the mean and median and mode are. Negatively skewed versus positively skewed distributions. What's the difference and how can we tell? Percentages versus percentiles. Correlations versus correlation coefficient. Item analysis versus item difficulty, power based versus speed based assessments, reliability versus validity, specifically including types or ways in which we can check for reliability and ways in which we can check for validity, norm reference versus criterion reference versus ispitively interpreted, and tests and inventories, or we call these tests and assessments. So specifically the intelligence assessments, the aptitude assessments, the achievement assessments, the personality assessments, and the interest assessments. What they are, how to identify them, and specific names of different examples. Okay, our research terms. Independent versus dependent variable. How can you identify them? What are the definitions of them? And just as a side note, when I say to be familiar with these terms, what I'm meaning is it's really important for you to know the definition of these terms and be able to prepare yourself to identify these terms in a critical thinking or application question. Now, I've noticed that the, these exams fall really into two buckets of questions, knowing the definition of the term. So what's the definition of the normal distribution? What's the purpose of the normal distribution? Or what's the definition of the independent versus dependent variable? And then getting a big paragraph and really being able to identify which term or concept they're talking about. 
So continuing with the research and assessment terms, independent versus dependent, inductive versus deductive research and reasoning, qualitative versus quantitative, specifically with this term, it's important to make sure you understand the definitions that the test wants you to know, not the definitions that you know. Frequently we say qualitative is the quality of things and quantitative is the numbers, but the test does not use those terms to define these two terms. So making sure when you're understanding the definitions, you're knowing the definitions and the examples and the critical thinking and application examples used according to the test language for whatever test you're taking. Now, like I said previously, you can find some overlap for the research and assessment section. The research and assessment section is pretty much the same throughout the tests that require this. Now for the LMSW, you will not see as many questions. The LCSW, you'll see a medium amount of questions, but the CPCE and the NCE, you will need to know the bulk of these terms. Mixed method research you'll need to know, types of qualitative research designs, experimental versus non-experimental research designs, types of quantitative research designs, the different sampling methods. This includes random sampling, uh, stratified sampling, proportional stratified cluster. Uh, I feel like I'm missing one. Uh, purposeful sampling, samples of convenience and volunteer sampling. What is a sample versus a population? Inferential versus descriptive statistical analyses. Parametric versus non-parametric techniques or data. External versus internal validity. Confounding variables, what are they and how you identify them. Single versus double blinding. Remember, blinding is different than binding. That's a term from another section. Threats to internal validity. Threats to external validity. The four levels of variable measurements the nominal ordinal interval ratio, how to identify them in examples of such, null versus alternative or altern, al, alternate or alternative hypothesis, you'll see either term used there, bivariate correlational research, and how that differs from t-test and the three types of ANOVAs. This includes the uh, one-way ANOVA, the factorial ANOVA, and the multivariate ANOVA. Now remember, ANOVA also stands short for analysis of variance. So you may not see the word ANOVA, but you might see the term t-test versus a one-way analysis of variance, t-test versus a factorial analysis of variance. Remember that factorial analysis of variance is different than a factor analysis and then a multivariate analysis of variance. Okay, so that concludes our video for today. That was a bit of a shorter video. Please check out our other videos to learn more about in depth these terms and definitions, but this is an overview of who needs to know the research and assessment terms, what you need to know and why you need to know them. You need to know them because they're on the exam. You need to know them because every point counts. It especially stinks when you've missed the exam by one point or two points or three points. So remember that research and assessment does matter and check out our other videos and like us subscribe to get notifications of when our other videos are coming out and stay tuned for more information. Thanks and have a great day.